is for this purpose the Son of Man was made manifested. The Son of God was made manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So if we camp with sin, it means we're operating in a way that is counterproductive. We have decided to swim against the tide and that which God wants to achieve in us by reason of the investment of the spirit of grace, he will not be able to achieve it. And we also stand the danger of losing our salvation. That is the reason why I've decided that it is better for me to be righteously strict with myself. It is in keeping with a tender love for my soul, for me to be righteously strict with myself. Someone might ask, okay, now that we know that the spirit of grace has more authority than sin, so that where sin abounds, the grace of God much more abounds to be a sufficient antidote to cancel out the effect, the influence, and the power of sin, so that I can live above sin every given time. So if, if you have a problem of lying, you can overcome it through the spirit of grace. If you have a problem of immorality, it can be overcome. Now, all I need to do now is to just digress a little and show you how to access grace. Because if you know how to access grace, you don't have any business living in sin. The resources that will undo the potential that sin has is rooted in the grace of God. So the Bible says that for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. The implication of that scripture is that the manifestation of Jesus led to the availability of grace, and it is grace that is the antidote to sin. Now, so if we now say, are you there? Are you following me? Um, when I travel around and I... allow for counseling and personal interaction. I, I get this a lot. Um, some will say, okay, the spirit of lust has been following me. So strong. Um, the spirit of grace is stronger than the spirit of lust. And the fact that the spirit of loss is on you doesn't mean that you sin. Huh? So once and again, that spirit comes on all of us, not only you. I just discovered that Satan cannot make me remove my belt. So the spirit of loss is on me, I know. But that spirit of loss doesn't have the power to enable me remove my belt. So when Satan is tired, he will remove it. Because I'm not going to swim along the tide of the empowerment that the spirit of loss wants to bring. Now, do you understand what I'm talking about here? You need to be strict to yourself because you will meet lust. God will not kill all the beautiful ladies in my body because you are here. Are you, are you with me? What he's doing is that he's empowering you not to be enslaved by what you see. They are very beautiful things in the land. So it is not news when you come and say, the spirit of lust. Sometimes even when I'm fasting, it comes. But it doesn't produce anything. It can come. <laughs> no problem. Bring more. When you are tired and you know that the resources are not producing results, you will look for someone else and transfer it. That's the point of being strict to yourself. Don't begin to explain away well, that am I is my body iron? Am I when you go into that philosophy, you are already falling. May the Lord give us understanding. <laughs>
So we all experience it. Huh? When Satan gets tired, he takes his thing away. And we are still making progress. So Satan has seen that with the energy of lust, he wasn't able to achieve compliance. It means there is something stronger than lust that I have. That is the reason why lust cannot get me. Because something stronger than lust, more ancient than lust, is available to me. And I subscribe to it. So, don't think anything is wrong with you if the spirit of lust is on you. If it has not been able to push you into negative action, it means that you are still living within the scope of strength that grace has made available. You don't know that some of us are more tempted than you. We have more grace because there is more temptation on our part. So there's nothing you are coming to tell me that I've not experienced two, three, four times over. I don't want to tell you stories today because I'm on, online. Women in this country that have said that their objective for me is that I should just sleep with them just once. They will send me money, big money. The kind of money I'm talking about is, is an ab abomination to have that kind of money. But yes, it's an abomination. But the only requirement is just sleep with her once. Just once. And the technicalities on how to keep it eternally secret have been put in place. You just, just say yes, it is done. And then big money. Uh, may I not have that kind of money? May you stay, may the Lord help you to stay where it will be easy for you to operate in righteousness. There is a place you will get to. Your authority, you'll be stripped of your authority. I don't have time. I don't. When we're offline, I will, I will talk to you. Strange experiences. Satan will come and test the resolve of your soul. And he will test you again. And he will test you outside of your country, outside of your domain, under different circumstances. He will test to see your commitment. My strength is that I am aware of the fact that the, the, the power that enables me to live above sin is stronger than sin. Hallelujah. So we have dealt with the spirit of grace. The antidote to sin. Now, I want us to do the hard one. The spirit of glory. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Why? For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, he say, happy are ye. Why? Because the spirit of glory and of God dot rest on you. So it's either called, are you there? It is, and it will interest you to know that it's the spirit of glory that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, I want to give you an explanation before we continue. Are you there? When Jesus was brought before, in fact, when Jesus' case was discussed in the Sanhedrin, which 
was the Jewish ruling council, and they were looking for a loophole in the law in order to be able to sentence Jesus to death. All the Pharisees and the Sadducees for the first time were united in this purpose. And when they sought a loophole in the law, in the Torah, to be able to sentence Jesus to death, they found none. So the chief priest had to come up with a doctrine of necessity. It is not, is it not better for one man to die than for a whole nation? That was the doctrine of necessity he came up with, which was not inclusive in the Torah. It's on the, on the strength of a doctrine of necessity that Jesus was sentenced to death by the Jude Jewish ruling council. When Jesus was brought before Pilate and the constitution of the Roman Empire was before Pilate and Pilate did not find one clause that would justify the execution of Jesus. Pilate left the justice system of the Romans and he also took advantage of an ancient tradition which provided that one criminal sentenced to death could be set at liberty on the strength of the choice of the people. Can you see that no system of justice whatsoever was part of the decision that led to the execution of Jesus? Are you there? So the Sanhedrin was the Jewish ruling council or the Jewish court where issues among the Jews were settled. Since Israel was not a self-governing nation at the time, the ruling power over Israel was Rome. So we have two courts that have sentenced Jesus to death without the backing of their own creed, their own grown norm. Are you there now? So they forgot that there's a third court, which is a higher, the highest court, which is the court of heaven. So God, are you following? God, who is a judge of all, sat in justice and saw that it was Jesus' death was an act of injustice from all the human courts. So he overruled the position of these courts, and that overruling was what was manifested as resurrection. So the spirit of glory came upon Jesus to raise him from the dead because according to the justice system of heaven, he was, um, what's the legal language for that? He was what? He was innocent. He was blameless. So the court of heaven overruled the position of the courts of men and the manifestation of that was in resurrection. Are you there now? Good. So the Bible is saying, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, you suffer not because of any wrongdoing you did, but you are suffering because of your fraternity with the name of Christ, your identification with the name of Christ and the purpose of the Lord upon the face of the earth. Now, this apostle is telling you, he say, happy are you. The reason is because sometime coming, the court of heaven is going to sit on your case. And the measure of injustice that you have suffered because of the kingdom of God will be meted out and a corresponding dimension of the spirit of glory to exalt you will be administered. Did you get that? Or you didn't get that? Let me show you something here. Are you there with me in the book of Acts chapter 5, beginning from verse 34 to 41? Acts chapter 5, verse 34 to 41. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed 
to yourselves what you intend to do as touching this man. For before these days rose up Tadas, boasting in himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. And after these rose up Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him and he also perished and all even as many as obeyed him were dispersed and now i say unto you refrain from these men and let them alone for if this counsel or this work be of men it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest ye aptly, lest aptly ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. This was the reaction of the apostles. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. It, it, it means there is, there is an aspect of discipleship that we were not taught, that these guys were taught. Because they are supposed to be leaving the place where they were flogged, broken. Regretting. Now, yeah, from my tribe, if someone is sorrowful, they can make crying a song. Huh? They can convert tears to melody. The person is crying, but the, the way the person is crying is as if you can take roll up the drums and the guitar and follow the melody that the person is producing with the tears. I was expecting them to cry that way. And these guys came out of the place where they were flocked. And they were no young boys, though. They were at least 40 years and above. And they were flogged like this. And when they came out, they were rejoicing because they had been counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. What did they teach them that they have not taught us? What did they expose them to that we have not been exposed to? It, 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 it must interest you to know that the way our salvation was uttered was with suffering. That's how Jesus uttered our salvation. And the Bible says that he is the author and the finisher of our believing. He uttered our salvation. He fulfilled the will of God that he was called to do on earth through suffering. And that is a pattern for all of them that will follow Christ. Anyone that is going to follow Christ in truth is going to experience persecution. Is going to experience suffering because of his identification with Christ. So God is aware of that. So what he has done is that he created an incentive an incentive that uh, will make persecution to be something that true disciples will look forward to. And the incentive is that by reason of the reckoning of the justice system of heaven, you become entitled to the spirit of glory. <laughs> oh my God. It's becoming, the thing is, is entering now. The spirit of glory and you know i told you there's a reference point to the spirit of glory it is the spirit of glory that rose jesus from the dead the spirit of glory so when you are being persecuted it's as if you are being silenced it's as if you are being shut up see it's, it's, it's like you are being cut off but when the spirit of glory comes upon you, 
Remember what Gamaliel said, that if this thing is of God, you cannot overthrow it. If this thing is of men, it will come to naught. Are you there now? Part of the way that God shows that the thing is from him is that he releases the spirit of glory upon it. And instead of the persecution to lead to destruction, to dispassion, the persecution will lead to fortification, exaltation, and promotion. And I am here to tell you that some of the growth and some of the favor we have ex ex experienced as individuals and as a ministry is because of persecution. Persecution is a good thing. The spirit of glory will be released to produce the opposite of what the people that are persecuting you had in mind. As a sign that this cannot be overthrown because it is of God. The spirit of glory. The spirit of glory. Don't rest upon you. I'm thinking of which example I will give you from my own personal experience. Because there are many examples. Examples of all kinds of pressures or persecutions that came because of the message of the kingdom. And even till now, we are going through persecutions, which is a sign that we're in alignment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, what the persecutors don't know is that they are making us eligible for heavier measures of the spirit of glory because you cannot overthrow what God is doing. The spirit of glory dot rest upon you. Are you there? Went to preach in one country and uh, unfortunately before we came, is it unfortunate or fortunate? Depending on the angle you are looking at it from. A certain blogger that I've never met now took, he saw something happening in that country that was not biblical. And the thing that was happening was, it was men of God, leading men of God that were responsible for it. So in order to critique that thing, he went and got one of my message, caught a part of it, and presented it as part of the argument to establish the case against that trend. Are you there? And I've never met this um, blogger. Never met him before. I hear that preachers pay bloggers to fight people and to do all that stuff. <laughs> that one is not a preacher. <laughs> if you can pay money for someone to criticize somebody, is 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 in circle. You know those days. There's something that we used to call circus. How many of you still remember it? If you are not, if you have not been around in the 70s, you may not know what I'm talking about. Just drama. So, and it will interest you to know that I preached that sermon like two years before. The blogger is using it now to critique a situation. And I had a meeting in that nation at the time. The first thing we experienced was that our billboards that were everywhere,
I know, I know you know what I'm talking about. The people were mobilized, and they were not mobilized from other places, from church, churches, to vandalize our people. In fact, the owner of the man renting the bill, sorry, the owner of the billboard, the guy that rents the billboard out, say in the history of this billboard, it has never been vandalized. Commotion everywhere. Commotion everywhere in that nation. And I prayed about it. God was still saying, go. And that was enough for me. Are you, are you there? Then the spirit of glory. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah, he said, when you are, when you are, let me, where's that scripture? I need, I need that scripture back. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Happy are ye. Everything was done to make that meeting flop. I'm not talking about small men. I'm talking about men that, heavy men. Everything was done to make sure that that meeting flopped. And you know what? Because it was of God, it could not be overthrown. That was one of the litmus tests that, that showed me that uh, even if I am called to be with the Lord, what has happened, what is taking place will not die. No, it won't. I saw men in authority fight and they lack the ability to overthrow it. He said, happy are you. That this is the, this is the root to authority. This is the root to spiritual capacity. Because if you are going to be an emissary for the kingdom of God and you don't have marks of suffering, you are a liar. There's going to be resistance because you want to stand for God. People will rise up, but it is a sign of good things. You are being recommended for another measure of the spirit of glory that raises up. That, that will discomfit the efforts and the arguments of men to suppress. This is the way of promotion in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I remember during my youth service, there was a fellowship that I, I felt led to be part of. And um, those were the days that, you know, before I left camp campus, Little anointing had come on my life. So when I went for youth service, it was an opportunity for me to train myself in the law, train myself for ministry. So when we got part of that fellowship and got involved, and the hand of God began to come on me. Hallelujah. I was a simple teacher and an intercessor at that time. I was not a powerful man. But when I finished teaching, the glory of God will come into that place and all kinds of encounters will begin to take place. In fact, some of them, I, I, I don't even know how it comes. So there were preachers in that fellowship that felt that I was stealing the show. So what they did was that they got a lady to testify against me that I committed fornication with her. So, and as my custom is, I don't defend myself. Now, if it is me you are attacking, forget about it. I won't, I won't say anything. But if you, if, you, if you are doing something that will bring injury to the body of Christ, me, I can't sleep. That thing you are doing, do it without putting it online because you are going to damage the body. I will rise up. I have a calling along that line to respond to you. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? That my practice you are trying to sell, I will use the Bible and pick it out. But this is not, this is contraband. And when I'm doing that kind of business, I don't bring the person into the view. What is wrong is not the person. What is wrong is the malpractice. Do you understand? So I, that, it's part of my business, okay? So the lady testified that I this virgin that. So the whole congregation said, yes, I, I kept quiet. Even my friends, close friends, came to ask me, is it? No, don't worry. That's not what you respond. Don't defend yourself. Allow God. You know, God, he just like Jesus was killed and buried. And then the court of heaven sat on the matter. And then resurrection was the response of the final justice terminal. Ah, don't be in a hurry to prove. Don't stand up and say, hey! it means if you do that, you are, you are guilty. You, are, you have something. There's something you are trying to preserve. So, I kept quiet. Kept quiet. Then, I now went to minister somewhere, not too far away. And three crippled people walked in that meeting. And the news of that empowerment, he went back to the fellowship. So the leader say, this man did not have this anointing before. The anointing, we know how God uses him. He raises cripples now. They began to check themselves. Then I went somewhere again to minister. Strange things took place. In fact, that I came back and I was asking God, what are you up to? Are you there? When these things began to take place, then God went to torment the lady <laughs> that brought the false testimony. The torment was strange, and then she came and confessed that, ah, it is this pastor that came to tell me to do. I was not even in that city when the confession broke out. So by the time I came back, the elders came and, uh, you know, were in the house of God. And they, even their presentation was even very terrible. They couldn't coordinate. But you know what? God had elevated me. That was how God gave me openings to begin to preach in cities and in other places. So I, I, I didn't have time to be available for, fellowship, for the fellowship again. God opened doors and I began to minister in. I follow you? And I didn't have time to be available. Not because I didn't want to be available, but there were so many kingdom things that opened up that I had to attend to. And when I was already operating on this tangent of grace and power, it was one year later that the truth now came out. As at the time the truth came out, I didn't even need that truth. Because it was obvious from the verdict of heaven in keeping with the spirit of glory that already rested, that heaven has already judged the matter. Are you, are you following don't defend yourself. Allow heaven to judge the matter. A certain minister rose up recently and his objective was to ensure that he dishonors me. Did strange things. And after doing that, went to report me to other senior ministers. 
Are you following? I kept quiet. He did what you did. I didn't respond. Then you now went and reported me. The story has not ended. When the story ends, I'll come back here and tell you this is what happened, this is what happened, and this is what God did. I'm waiting on the court of heaven for final verdict. Yeah. I have, I'm patient because I believe that God is a better judge than your own carnal fleshly response. Let's allow God to step in. It doesn't matter how long. When he steps in, it will be evident that the spirit of glory has rested on the one that is on the side of the will of God. Many people will envy you. Many people will backbite you. Keep quiet. If you behave yourself, God will be involved. If you behave yourself, God will be involved in the matter. And the way God will answer is that the spirit of glory ah, will rest on you. This mission I went for showed me that the spirit of glory, a higher measure of that spirit that raises, that exalts, that elevates, that takes people from under, from beneath, and raises them up. Is the spirit of glory that was responsible for his resurrection, was responsible for his ascension, was responsible for his coronation, the spirit of glory. We went to open our branch in Belgium. So the time came for me to bless Pastor Jonathan and his wife. And I began to invoke the powers of the call, the covenants that I have with God. I began to invoke it, and I laid hands on them. Are you with me? Jonathan went down for three hours. He couldn't stand up. We shared the grace and left. I, went and ate and went back home. It was there. His wife now went to help him. What, and he, they, they didn't caught up with her. To, she, she, she was. <laughs> That's why that video that they showed you, I don't know who made that video. That video is banned. Because if you attended any of these meetings that we are talking about, oh, Jesus Christ. Allow God to solve it. He will solve it. And the way he will do it is that he will release the spirit of glory. Your rank, even in the annals of heaven, has changed. The records about you has moved higher. Oh, he said, happy you. Because the spirit of glory. Many people have insulted me. Then they will insult. Then they will now send somebody to come and ask me to test my pulse. They don't know that I'm an old Christian that I followed Jesus from when I was a young lad. It's not about what men feel. That's not, that's not my business. My business is I want to know what Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So they are going to insult you. And sometimes it's not even people that are unbelievers. They are going to take your story and tell lies about you on the streets. They are going to try to deface you just because you are a carrier of a light that, it, that purges. You are an instrument of purging. And so men in alliance with devils we seek to resist you. He said, when you find yourself in this condition, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory, the spirit of God, will rest upon you. Today, when I look back, I thank God that that lady lied against me. 
Because when they don't lie against me, I don't grow. These guys were happy. They, they've been living in peace for a long time. But they became happy after the Sanhedrin caned them because they knew that they are now eligible. They were drafted into the economy of the body of suffering. And that means that there is a higher dimension of the glory of God that will be manifested in their life. Meanwhile, many people have lost the glory of their calling. I pray that God will open your eyes to see things the way God sees things, not the way men see things. I can live with someone insulting me. I can live with people lying against me. I can live with it. Because my, my first audience is Jesus. Do you understand that? The spirit of glory and of God don't rest upon you. So part of the things that God is going to do in this time, people that are being buffeted, people that are being, Satan is trying to silence, people that are trying to extend the influence of Christ, and Satan has entered into the hearts of men to raise a wall of opposition, to resist them from access and entry. Part of what you begin to see in the body of Christ, the spirit of glory will begin to raise the new functionaries that will speak for God in the land and in the nations. Hallelujah. And there is no way you can be recommended for that kind of elevation if at no point were you reproached for the name of Christ. You want to take your stand with Jesus in a moment as we pray. I stand with Jesus. I stand with a campaign to enthrone him as governor among the nations. I stand with Jesus to proclaim his name and his kingdom in spite of the opposition. I stand with Jesus. I stand with Jesus. Give me the grace to stand for what you stand for. Even when it is not popular. Even when it is no longer in vogue. She mahale bokot. And who will stand for oh God in Adelaide? Fight the enemy on faith's battleground. Lift the banner of Christ's high. Even glory to my King who will stand for God in my land. Will you stand with him? I will stand for God in my land. Fight the enemy on faith's battleground. If the banner of Christ I bring in victory to my king, I will stand, O oh God, in my land. Will you stand when it becomes difficult? When people consider you and your voice an object of offense because of their 
fraternity with the way of iniquity. I will stand for Jesus. Who will stand? Se mi no cobre mamma ma sia la tua. Lindo bobo si cofresco ba mante i copali a sa cobre mamma na tua. E endo bo sa cuta brante scopo bo sete. Abrai con pamu no saca bonda. Le is compresco fatu la pagabo se que te. Romina si comprami capai tata. Esco bonda bababo de se que la brosquete. Isa, vos que ta bonde que te boboda. Y el lo babosa y compras que tomina cala babodo. is no longer popular to walk in holiness will you stand as a Nazarite as someone whose garments are not defiled will your testimony your witness will he still be a weapon of the kingdom of light to overthrow the wickedness of your generation. Today, our generation is without conviction. If someone is doing something and money is coming, that is proof. That God is involved. <laughs> mm. God, God must help us quickly. He must help us quickly. In a moment of time, in the place of prayer right now, we are going to ask God to strengthen your conviction. Strengthen your conviction because the reason for persecution is to bring you to a point where you are manipulated out of your conviction. If your heart is poised in such a way that you are willing to pay a price to give him glory, then the spirit of glory rests upon you. I am willing to stand my ground. I am willing to bear witness like an oracle of fire. I am willing. I am willing. I am willing. It doesn't matter what the devil throws at me. He say, happy are you? For the spirit of glory and of God doth rest upon you. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes, strengthen me, strengthen me to take my stand, to take my stand against the evil tide raging in your house. Strengthen me, oh, to be fully energized in the face of contradiction and persecution. Strengthen me. Elo mama mosi ko presko filaito mambre kura hafasta te bogo de na ikata marai. Elo baski to prami na kateli arombe skovo zomo korea 
Isa compres cadabo cote bacute bacasite. Empre que te la subria la babondade. Amola is. Embro cose cababa boncha y cobrebina cadia. We need that are thick stuff to survive in this time. Bearing the message of the kingdom of Jesus. Robena Santoria, Rabe Bacasque, Tabila, and Pelia. Robo Sico, Reso Fanta Robo Coria. Mabrico Santoria, Iscompele, Ramisa, Adlabo Cote, Baico, Remisto Tia. Fortify my conviction. Fortify my conviction. Fortify my conviction. In the name of Jesus. First Peter chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. I just want to read the scripture to you. First Peter 2 from verse 19 to 23. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. Are you there? All right. For even hereunto ye were called. It means it's part of our calling to suffer for the cause of Christ. Because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that he should follow in his steps who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judged what righteous so when God puts all the things that are happening in the crucible of the beam balance of justice, it will come up with a reading. He said, this man that they have suppressed, let him be raised. This man that they have killed, let him resurrect. This man that they have defaced, let him radiate. This man that they have afflicted, let him reign. It is accepted with God. Oh my God. Can we cry out? Say, do you still, how many of you still remember Anna? Anna. The other lady was assaulting her. The other lady was your, your womb is a grave. Injustice was prospering. And everybody started becoming unrighteous because they felt that injustice was the way of things because it was as though God was not responding to 
the cry of the just. Give it time. You know, who when he was revived, revived not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteous. Who told you that the people that are attacking you spiritually, who told you that God is not seen? People that are trying to ensure that you are frustrated. Who told you that God does not see it? He said, when it is happening and you decide to accept it with patience, it means you have some understanding. And you are committing it to the judge that judges righteous. The, the result of the judgment will soon be, soon be available. God is a God of justice. And in the day in which we dwell, you are going to be seeing the response that is coming from the throne of heaven. Oh my God. Many among us will be lifted. Many that were kept in the prison house will be set at liberty. Many will head for the palace instantly. Things will begin to change because there's going to be feedback from the justice of heaven. Oh my God. The requirement here is patience. Can we ask God, make me a man of patience. Make me a woman of patience. Someone that will not be in a haste until God arises to respond. Justice will be served. The intervention of God will soon be visible. Because the spirit of glory will rest upon him. Thank you. 